Hello and welcome to another episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. In this episode I shall be doing a makeover on this beautiful little vintage model of an Austin A50 and of course it was built by Matchbox Lesney. They first came out in 1957 and this is the number 36A. Now there's a bit of a story associated with this model and that is that it was sent to me by Brian May from Grants Pass in Oregon. And Brian found it whilst he was metal detecting and he has a YouTube channel and it actually features in one of his videos. And if you'd like to check out Brian's channel, it is called Dirt Bandit Outdoors. So may I suggest that after you've watched this video, you jump over to Brian's channel and watch his video about him finding this car. So back to the model, these came out in this blue color. It's a light blue and uh, they also came out in a sort of a light turquoise bluey green color. Well I've actually done one of these before in this blue color. So today for Brian I'm going to do it in the other color. And the reason for this is that I actually have a second one of these models of my own that came from Darren Deans from Manchester in the UK. Now you can certainly see that this was buried and found by a metal detector. Now this is the model of the A50 that I've already done. I got it out of my display cabinet to show you. And I'm hoping that the one that Brian sent me is going to look equally as good. So looking in the Roger Darkins Matchbox Guide, you can see here that indeed they did come out in two different colors. And there's something going on about a windscreen brace. I'm not too sure what that is, but I'll have a look for that when I separate this model. Seems like the ones with no windscreen brace are worth a little bit more money on the market. If you've got one, maybe you could check it out. Uh, I did a little bit of research online to try to find out what color the turquoise looked like. And there are so many different photographs that I struggled to find a color that uh, I could be assured was a matchbox color. Uh, very many variations of the turquoise and light blue. I dug out my refrigerated truck vehicles because I felt that maybe I could use those as a guide. Uh, the one in my right hand, and it's now in my left hand, <laughs> is uh, a color that I thought closely matched possibly the original. So you could see there the contrast between the blue and the turquoise. Um, so I was kind of trying to match that color for this makeover. And uh, in the back of my mind, I was thinking a little, it was a little bit too dark. So I might address that later on. Anyway, uh, my wife Julie said to me, oh, is that the Harry Potter car? How cute. And I thought, you know what, maybe it is. So I checked out online and the Harry Potter car is actually a Hillman Minx. And I had a model of that too, so I got it out to show Julie. And here it is for you to see. It's a beautiful two-tone model with that cream roof and the similar blue around the bottom. So here's a few close-ups of the model in question that I'm working on today. You can see it's covered in rust underneath there. Those axles are so rusty that they've swollen up. And they've actually cracked all of the tires. So I'm going to have to find some new tires. First up though, I've got to get the base off and drill and tap that little rivet post so that I can put this thing back together. So as usual, I am using a suitably sized drill to remove not the whole rivet, but just the spread end of it that actually retains the base onto the model. Now, after I started drilling with this drill, I noticed that it was slightly too small. So I exchanged it for a slightly larger one. The reason being is I don't want to actually remove the rivet as such. I just want to remove the flared end of the rivet. That's the bit that's keeping the base on.
I'm using this center punch. It's a spring-loaded center punch, and this is what it's like if you haven't seen one before. It has spring-loaded pressure when you push down on it. It's used for centering holes when you're drilling something and you need to be accurate. But here I'm using the spring force of the punch to push the two parts of the model apart. I'm holding the wheels so that the force of the center punch should push the body away from the base. Be nice if it was one action. There you go. Uh, look at all that filth and grime coming out of that model. Uh, from where it was buried in Oregon. I'll have to dispose of that in a sensible manner so that I don't get an email or a phone call from the environmental department of victoria which i had once before when i exp i won't go into that now to get the rust off i thought what have i got so i've got some of this rust guard i don't know what it's for it's i think it's more for preventing rust before it occurs but today i thought i might just try because i've got nothing else in in the cupboard at the moment so i'm going to fill up this little jelly pot here that I saved with some of this rust guard and dunk the chassis in it and see whether or not it can eat away the rust on those axles and if it does then maybe I'll be able to save them and reuse them and keep this model original. I didn't know how much to use I thought I could paint it on and I actually ended up using about half the bottle just to sort of cover it up and you'll see in a minute that it turned out to be really really filthy afterwards and I couldn't reuse it so I basically wasted half well I didn't waste it uh, well I did <laughs> I basically wasted half a bottle of rust guard as you'll see so I left it for a couple of hours to do its job and I thought I'd come back and miraculously this thing would fall apart Doing this makeover has reminded me that I've actually got a metal detector of my own and I've decided to dig it out and go and find some treasure for myself. So I've got my metal detector and I'm going into this bush block behind me and I'm going to see if I can find anything. I've got my tools as well for digging up. But not only that, because I'm going into the bush there's snags and hazards, could be snakes, and I might get injured and need to call someone. So I'm taking a walkie-talkie. And uh, Kevin's got the other one in the house, and uh, so if I get into trouble, I can call Kevin, and he will uh, summon the emergency services. So I'll just test it out. Kevin, are you there? One click for yes, two for no. Okay, thanks, I'm going in. Let's go find some treasure. All right, let's go. So I'm heading next door into this vacant block that used to be a state school. So I'm hoping to find some lunch money that may have been dropped by one of the pupils a hundred years ago. This is the area in which I'm searching today. I'm using my metal detector and it is a MineLab Xterra 305. And for the record, this video is not sponsored by MineLab. But MineLab, if you're watching, please feel free to send me the best one that you've got. Now, to paint strip the model, I use some of this Sally's Quick Strip. And look at that, that's how quick it is. Not only did it strip the paint off, but it's also primed the model for me to paint. There on the underside, you can see that I have 
put a screw thread inside that rivet shaft that was left and I've put in a 3M button headed screw to be used to put the base on when this makeover is finished. Now that the body of the model has been primed, you can easily see that the body has been damaged by weathering and corrosion over the years. I'm hoping that a nice thick coat of paint might disguise some of this damage. But before I paint it, I thought I'd just give it a light scuff over with this very fine emery paper and try and take down some of the high spots on the roof and the body that have been caused by the corrosion, I guess. So what I'm going to do is just lightly rub it down with finger pressure and then probably give it another light coat of the undercoat and see what it turns out like. So this is before I give it the second coat. I'm feeling quite optimistic and this is what it looks like after the second coat. Uh, I think you'll agree it's uh, passable. It looks quite good. There's uh, very, very fine damage on the roof, but it's invisible to the naked eye. And I'm sure when it's got a coat of paint on there, it's going to look a million dollars. Remember at the beginning I spoke about the window bracing on some of the models? These little pegs underneath the roof, I believe, must be the window bracing that collectors are talking about. I'm now taking out the base from the rust guard solution. It's been sitting in there for a couple of hours and I'm intrigued to see whether it's made any impact on those rusty axles. They look slightly better and they can turn, but I come to the realization that there is no hope for the wheels whatsoever as they have totally split and are un unusable. And I decide that since I've got to remove the wheels from the axles, I may as well remove the axles from the model and replace them with some new ones. Using these small long nose pliers, I'm removing the wheels from the axles. And as you can see, the wheels are totally useless. They could not be reused at all and have to go straight into the bin. I don't know whether it's the rust guard or just natural aging and the effects of being buried under the ground for who knows how many years, but these tires are very soft and crumbly and uh, nothing like what you'd expect on a on a model car so in the bin they go along with the axles which uh, I had to cut off with my circular cutting disc on my little Dremel Having removed the wheels and axles, I'm looking at the base and I can see that it's been distorted somewhat and needs flattening out. I have a bit of a concern at the rear of the base plate there. There is a crack between the two rear axle supports and I'm a bit worried if I try to straighten this out that could crack through altogether and give me a bit of a headache. First up, I try a simple technique of flattening the base in the jaws of this tiny little hobby vice. It didn't seem to work particularly well. It is a very cheap vice and it does have a bit of flex in it. Next, I thought I might try tapping it out with a hammer. I was going to do it on this flat plate on my vice, but I couldn't do that because of the reinforcement rib along the base there. So instead I had to put it off to the side and then when I hit it with a hammer it was going to hopefully be hammered totally flat. First impressions are that I'm having a bit of win here so I go for the other side. Overall it's turned out not too bad. Uh, it's not perfect by any means obviously you cannot uh, make something like this look perfect because of the amount of corrosion that it has experienced. The very front of the base section has got a, 
little bend in it. It's dipped down, so I'm worried that once again it's going to break. So I'm going to try and put a little bit of heat in it with my blowtorch and, and hopefully bend it back into shape without breaking it. So I'm going to use my little butane gas torch. If you haven't got one, I recommend you get one. They're a fantastic little tool and I use them all the time. So you apply a little bit of heat to the metal, it softens it up just that little bit to allow you to straighten it without it being stressed too much. I let it cool before I take it out. I've learnt the hard way to do that. Uh, having a look, it's uh, not perfect. It's getting there. I'm, I think I gave it another belt of the hammer before I was happy with uh, how it looked. But overall, I'd have to say at this point, I'm happy with that. So now that I've straightened the base, I want to undercoat this and then paint it some, paint it with some gloss black paint, as the original base was gloss black from the factory. So I just do that now using some Tamiya Fine Primer and just some gloss black spray can paint that I bought at a local shop. You cannot read the words on the base particularly well. They are, they are decipherable, but they are quite difficult to see due to the, the effects of the corrosion and the, the pitted surface of the plate. It does, however, look heaps better than before I painted it. So I had a rummage around in my little wheel box and I found these perfect match wheels. They are grey metal wheels, just like the original, and they're just the right size too. So I'm going to give them a spruce up and I think they'll work. Now I'm going for that green colour, the turquoise, and I'm starting the laborious progress, the laborious process of mixing the paint. I thought it would be pretty easy because it's a bluey green, so I figured add some blue to green or vice versa and it should work out. But it seemed to take me forever to get to the colour that I wanted, or something similar at least. I actually felt this was a little bit dark, but I thought I'd run with it anyway and, and hope that it looks good at the end. So into my spray booth and I give it a final stir. And these are Mr. Hobby paints, by the way, that I'm using. I've had a few failures before and today was no exception. Almost immediately as I started to paint, I realized something was wrong. The paint did not seem to go on smoothly or settle in a normal sort of wet gloss finish. See, immediately there, I, was, I mean, it's only been 20 seconds or so, and I noticed that for some reason the paint was an awful finish. The, it seems like the paints I used were not all compatible with each other and they actually separated in the pot. I don't know what it is with Mr. Hobby paint. I'm, uh, usually I use Tamiya and the last few times I've used Mr. Hobby I've had problems. So um, it could be that I'm using paints that are, I mean they say they're water based or aqueous I think it says on the label. But I can't fully decipher the labels and um, so I'm basically just trial and error trying to work out what works and what doesn't. And I'm thinking I'm failing more than I am winning. So I'm going to stick with Tamiya for now on for the rest of this uh, makeover. And uh, one good thing that came of this was I had to strip the model back and recoat it with the Tamiya Fine Primer. And it gave me another opportunity to address the pitting on the roof. And you probably saw just before that I'd smeared some very fine filler on the roof just to try and make it look a little bit smoother than it did before. So here I go, take two with the Tamiya mixed paint. And this is, I'm in a happy place now because I can see it's going on better. And not only that, I made the color a couple of shades lighter because um, I was continually looking at pictures on the internet to try and decide what color to use. And to tell you the truth, I don't know if this is right or wrong. There's that many variations uh, that there appears to be anyway. 
Um, but overall, I look at it and it's got a vintage look to it. And uh, I'm pleased. I'm very pleased with the color that um, I was left with. So these uh, metal wheels that I've found, I don't know how long I've had them, but they, they've they been rattling around in the box for a number of years, I'm guessing. They've got signs of minor damage, even though I believe them to be brand new. Could be um, reproductions, not sure. They could be originals. Anyway, I've got this light grey Tamiya wash that I've made up. It's a very dilute light grey paint, and I just paint it on the wheels to try and freshen them up a little bit. As for the axles, I have sourced some very short axles from my axles collection. Uh, one end is domed and the other one is flat. And they're the shortest ones I could find, but the, this model is so small that um, even the shortest axles protrude a fair way out. Uh, so after I've cleaned them up, with the emery paper and putting them in the drill of course. I'm going to squash the ends over to mimic the original finish on the end of these early axles which is where they, they just flatten them by mechanical means. So I'm annealing the end of the axle with my little blowtorch uh, as has featured before in some of my videos and that just makes the metal a little bit softer and a little bit easier to, to tool and manipulate and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing in a minute by crushing the ends with some self-locking pliers. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you may have seen me use this technique in the past. Uh, the important thing is that these locking pliers, I've ground off the ends of them so they are flat surfaced at the, at the tips. So that when I crush the axle, it doesn't leave like a zigzag pattern in it. It was actually quite flat and um, pleasant to look at rather than a, a rough looking finish. You can see there that these short axles, I call them short axles, but they actually look long in this instance, but they're not. Um, I've cut them off with those side cutting pliers. That's not blood on my finger, by the way. It's red paint from when I was working the other day. And um, yeah, because it's been heated up and soft, I can now crush it with these pliers and um, try to replicate the original. So I leave just enough sticking out there that I can get a grip with these pliers uh, so that I won't damage the face of the wheel that I've painted. And I squeeze them flat and as you can see, it, it squeezes it flat, but it also deforms it, makes it look a little bit odd. So there's still some finishing off to do to these axle ends to make them look sort of original. And that is with a grinding disc or a sanding disc on my Dremel. I just grind the ends down and shape them with some little hobby files to make them look a little bit more realistic to the originals. So with my thumb there, I am holding back the wheel so it doesn't vibrate forwards and get scuffed up and damaged. That's all it takes. Really just a second of work initially just to take the end off and then if it burrs up on the edges, which it sometimes will, I just get a tiny little file here. It's a square file, I think. and make them look nice, uh, or make them look nicer. Here's a little oven, I haven't used it for a while, but I've had such a lot of grief with the paint, it's put me behind schedule, and I wanted this paint to dry quickly and be hard enough for me to handle without leaving fingerprints on it. So I popped it in the oven for 15 minutes on an extremely low heat, uh, around about, I think, sort of 30 degrees, like a flaming warm, summer's day nothing too extreme because it's cold here it's winter in australia at the moment and it is freezing so the paint is taking its time to go off and harden so the cooker did its stuff it's hardened the paint and now i'm able to put the base on 
using that little button headed screw that I mentioned earlier on which of course is now color matched because I put it in before I painted the body. Not bad looking color either, I'm quite pleased with that green. Turned out not too bad, I've just got to paint some details on this model now and it will be done. And I shall show you the, the other one in my collection and also the other one that I am keeping. I'm using this metallic ink pen, it's a very cheap one from a like a $2 shop if you have such a thing where you live, they've probably got them. And through experimentation I've found that this ink flows a lot easier on these small little uh, features or details. It flows a lot easier than paint. Paint can be a little bit gluggy and a little bit hit and miss but this ink is consistently fluid uh, and it seems to dry really quick and it flows beautifully into all the details and it doesn't sort of conceal them. And you see there, I've, I've, I mean I'm, I can put on a second coat even and it will still not conceal all those tiny little cast details on these models. Sorry about the focus there, it's my autofocus, my fingers getting in the way because I'm using it to sort of hold things still. Difficult to get a shot of painting little things like this. I've got all manner of tripods and camera stands but uh, I can never really show what I want to show. I mean I get there 90% of the time but sometimes you have to use your imagination. <laughs> on the first model of these I did the tow hook I painted silver because I'd seen a picture of one with a silver tow hook. I've since found out that um, it makes sense they are black because the base is black and the tow hook is part of the base. So here we have a quick preview of what we started with today. Remember this model was discovered by Brian May whilst he was metal detecting. And you can see that it's obviously been buried for a very long time as it suffered a lot of corrosion and uh, looks a little bit sad. But this is what it looks like now and I think you'll agree it has been transformed. I absolutely love this little model and more than that I love the colour. I'm rather pleased with the results. It is uh, much better than I imagined possible to tell her the truth. And as you can see, I have painted the rear tail lights red, as this was sometimes done on the actual model. So here is a picture. You can see the blue one that I have had in my collection now for quite a while, and it features in a previous video. There is also the model from Brian that I am returning to him. And um, I've also got the, the other one there from Darren in Manchester and I am keeping that one because originally I wanted one of each model that Matchbox ever made in their first series and not knowing that about all the different colour variations and that. Nevertheless I shall soldier on but uh, due to Darren's generosity I've now got two of these models one in the blue and one in the green so I am extremely happy. So thank you Brian and thank you Darren for both of you if it wasn't for both of you, then this video would not have taken place. How do I know this is an old state school block? Well, the answer's right here at my feet. There's a memorial plaque there, almost buried. This tree was planted to commemorate the Centennial State Education in Victoria. So 1873 it started, the school here, and it went till 1973, so 100 years. Well, 100 years of... Uh, Memories commemorated on that sign. Anyway, I'm out of here. I haven't found anything. Kevin, are you? Kevin, I need some wire cutters. Kevin. Kevin. 
So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. If you have, please like, subscribe, and recommend to your friends. And until next time, this is Marty from Marty's Matchbox Makeovers saying goodbye. <laughs>